Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We exalt your name, oh God. Thank you, Father. Lord God Almighty, we bless your name, oh God, for bringing us, oh God, yet together again into your presence. Father, we ask, oh God, this morning, come at tabernacle with us in the name of Jesus. Oh, my little fraka poso beneko prede hela go bosa hana nande si anato. Father, we thank you, oh God. Lord, we ask take absolute control over every part of this service. Move in your power. Let yokes be broken, oh God. Let our work come forth with fire. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. We have prayed. Hallelujah. You are welcome to church. God bless you as you take your seat in Jesus' name. Amen. Harvesters, is it good to praise the Lord this morning? Is it a good time to praise the Lord? Let's rise up on our feet and give the Lord a shout of praise. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Hey. only one name with power to say with power to save there is only one name there is only one name there is only one name with power to say Pass you with no day, 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 day,
You got the whole world in your hands. Come on, don't come on, don't, don't, don't. Come on, don't, don't, don't. Come on, don't, don't, don't. Say you got the whole world. What's in the past, you pass, you be no good. What's in the past, you be no good. Say, she got the whole world in your hand. Come on, don't come on, don't, don't, don't. Everything else it can work for me. Me, I know they to the wrong. Now you make the favor, follow me. Now you make the blessings come down to my door. And if I want to go on the road, on the road, we don't need to focus. Everything I want, everything I want, everything that is mine. We like to just drop by, drop by. We don't need to focus. Hey God. She got the whole world. You got the whole world in your head. You got the whole world in your head. Come on, don't come on, don't do do. Come on, don't do do. Come on, don't do do. Come on, do hands together for Jesus. Praise Jesus. You are welcome to church this morning. Say hello to your neighbors. Say good morning. Tell them how lovely they look this morning. Yes, yes. Do that. Do that this morning. Praise Jesus. You may be seated in God's presence. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. You are welcome to church this morning. Welcome also to our online audience. Wherever you are joining us in the world, we believe that the presence of God here in the auditorium is there with you to cause the change you want to see in your life. You want to give a round of applause to our online audience this morning? Praise Jesus. Celebrate them. Praise the Lord. We love you. Let us know where you are joining us from. We want to welcome you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. A couple of announcements for us this morning. 
Uh, next level prayer. Somebody say next level prayers. Next level prayers. Praise the Lord. Somebody say grace, grace, grace. This is my story. Hallelujah. Next level prayers continues tomorrow morning on all our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and MixLR at 6.30 a.m. And you're supposed to do what? You're supposed to join and do what? Invite someone. Somebody say invite someone. Praise the Lord. The theme for next level prayers this coming week is my siege is over. And our siege will be over in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Who's excited about NLP London? Hallelujah. You should be more excited than this. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. God is doing mighty things through us at Avestas. And next level London comes up on July 1st. July 1st. Somebody say July 1st. And you are supposed to invite someone you know, okay? You are supposed to invite someone you know. Make yourself useful by inviting someone. And you can also partner with us to make that event a success. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is there anybody here that has gotten a testimony from Next Level Prayers? Or you have a testimony from... If you have, if you have gotten testimonies from Next Level can you can I see you wave, wave your hands? Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I can see many people waving their hands here. Please... If you have a testimony and you want to share it with the house, you want to be a blessing to someone, can you please rise up and go to my left? Somebody will be there to attend to you. Please, please, and please make yourself. Yes, you can stand up. You can go right away and go to my left. Somebody will be willing to attend to you to take your testimony. And you can share with the house and be a blessing. That's a good thing to do. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Growth track continues today. After all the services today, after the first, second, third, and fourth service, growth track is happening. And what is growth track? Growth track is your entry into becoming uh, a member, a true member of Harvesters. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you tired of doing life alone? Are you tired of just coming to church and walking back without having people that you can fellowship with, that you can, you know, build relationship with? You want to do that by uh, joining Growth Track. And you want to be of service in the house of God, you can do that also by being a part of Growth Track. So if you've not attended Growth Track before, you have an opportunity today to do so after any of our services. Amen? Amen. Praise Jesus. We are also having our business acceleration course. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Give a round of applause for that's one, one good moment to give a round of applause for the house. Uh, the business acceleration course offers you the opportunity to acquire the needed skills, knowledge, Mentorship funding. Somebody say funding. Amen. Funding and building relationships you need to achieve your goal. So if you've not registered before for the business acceleration course, those seats are fast running out. You have the opportunity today to do that. It's coming up on the June 16th. It's coming up on June 16th and 17th uh, at the Landmark Event Center from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day. Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. A video will play on the screen. Please train your eyes on the screen and pay attention. Amen? Amen. Um, 2017, I was diagnosed with ovarian cysts. That's where the whole project started from. Then 2020, it got worse. We have 12 months in a year. I think I'll do my period for just four months. And then the rest of the year, I won't see my period. Um, 20, last year, I did my period for just five months, and then it was getting worrisome. I went to the hospital, I got drugs. It was like, they're using drugs to induce my period. It wasn't coming naturally at all. So I just stopped it because it was making me add weight. Everything was just frustrating. Um, but every time Pastor B says my name online, it's always PCOS. I don't know if there's any other being paid, but anytime he says being paid, they are of PCOS. So I always key into that. Um, this story is like in two parts. There's NLP testimony, there's wine press testimony. Because every time he says my name is on wine press. But I wrote my prayer points during wine press. And immediately after wine press in February, I saw my period. March, I saw my period. April, I saw my period. This month, last month, May, first week in May, my period came. And something was like... Why are you ungrateful? In my mind, I was like, well, it's, maybe it's another six months. You would go and not come again. But I just told myself that I am healed. I came into this, and I know this month I will see my period again. Grace, grace, grace. This is my story. Praise God. Hallelujah. This month, receive angels that carry testimonies. Yeah, 
Join us this Monday this at 6.30 a.m. live on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Mixer with the details as shown on your screen. But whatever you do, do not come alone. Invite five friends and let them attend to receive their testimonies. Grace, 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 that is our story. Hallelujah. Can we rise this morning? As we worship our Father. Father, we worship you this morning. Can you say thank you, Jesus? I can hear you. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. This is the first Sunday in the month of June. Has God been faithful to you? Has God been faithful to you? Lift up those hands and adore him. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our worship. We worship your Father.
Unto the lamb that sits upon the throne. Can you raise a sound of adoration? If you have a prayer language, Liba Kana Matoto Kode Bokoria Telebosha, Likana Mando Zukeriata, to the ageless one, to the one that does not have a beginning and does not have an end. Oh, Makabe Kedia Telibo Shikateli Kana Manda, our Father, our Keeper, our Helper, our Lover, our Restorer, Ile Bokoshiate, our Defender, Likana Makoto Kinebo Shataya. We worship you. We give you praise. We exalt your holy name. My God that is good and kind. 
with me Nikade Bokodia Telebosha Nikete Kinebosha None to be compared to you After you is you Leketeliana Bakoshiata Father we give you praise Jesus we worship your holy name For in Jesus Mighty name we have prayed And if you are watching us online Kindly get into a prayer posture We are going to start by thanking God this morning Hallelujah the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 22. I'm reading the Amplified Version. It says, it is because of the Lord's loving kindness that we are not consumed. Because his tender compassions never fail. If you know that you could not have kept yourself. If you know that it has been God all the way. I want you to begin to lift up your hands and begin to thank him. To the one that has shown you so much love. The one that has loved you effortlessly. The one that has loved you endlessly. I want us to begin to bless his only name. Father, thank you because you love me. Thank you because your love has preserved me. Thank you because your love has preserved my children. Thank you because your love has kept me. I am persuaded that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Scripture says this is how God demonstrates his love to us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for me. If I was the only one here, he would still send his love, his only begotten son to die for me. Thank you for the overwhelming love you have for me. I'm preserved by your love. I'm kept by your love. I'm graced by your love. What manner of love has the Father has for us? Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can we say I'm loved by God? I'm loved by God. Romans chapter. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Please turn your Bibles with me for 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4. I'm reading from the Persian translation. It says, I'm always thanking my God for you. Because he has given you such free and open access to his grace. Through your union with Jesus the Messiah. Can we say my father, my father? My father, my father. Thank you for giving me free and open access to your grace through Jesus. I want us to begin to lift up our voices. Thank you for giving me free access to your grace. Scripture says, therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let you Thank you for free access to your grace. Thank you for access to your grace. Thank you for access to your help. Thank you for access to grace. In every area of my life, I have access to grace. That enables me to do much more than my natural abilities can do. Father, I'm grateful because I have Jesus. I have access to grace. I have access to life. I have access to peace. I have access to abundance. I have access to prosperity. I have access to health. Thank you because I'm never stranded. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. Thank you because we know that with your grace we can do much more. Infinitely more than our natural abilities. Thank you because your grace qualifies us. Thank you because your grace is your investment in our lives. Thank you because it's your grace that sets us apart from the from the rest. Your grace stands us out. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for what Jesus has done for us. Thank you for all the benefits we have through Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. This morning we are going to be praying for connections, for partnerships, and for help. Psalm 23 verse 1, the New Living Translation says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. 
Hallelujah. Can you declare with that scripture, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Can you say, my father, my father? My father, my father? Because you are my shepherd, I declare that I have all that I need to succeed in business. I have all that I need to succeed in my career. I have all that I need to succeed in that marriage. I have all that I need to succeed in parenting. Can you begin to lift up your voice and begin to declare I lack nothing in business. I have everything that I need. I prosper in the works of my hands. Everything I need has been given unto me and therefore I go forth in this week and beyond and I prosper. I succeed. I do exploits in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Father we thank you because you are our shepherd. We do not lack any good thing. We have everything that we need to do exceedingly well in business. We have everything that we need to prosper in our career. We have wisdom. We have understanding. We know how to do it. We have the advantage of the Holy Ghost. We have guidance. We do not lack direction. We are not confused. Father, we thank you. Thank you because this week and beyond, we make excellent decisions that give us quantum leaps in the name of Jesus. Father, we are grateful. Thank you because we know that we, nothing dies in our hands in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I have access to funding because you are my shepherd. I have access to relationships. I have keys to my industry because of my God is my shepherd. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. This week I want you to walk with that confidence. As you go to your office, as you go everywhere, walk with that confidence. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Romans chapter 6 verse 13. New Living Transition. It says, do not let any part of your body become an instrument of, the, of evil to self-sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right to the glory of God. Can we say, my father, my father? I give myself to you completely. Purify me from every filthiness of the flesh and the spirit in the name of Jesus. I want us to begin to lift up our voices to say, Father, purify me. Cleanse me in the name of Jesus. Great to me a clean heart, O Lord. And renew the right spirit within me in the name of Jesus. De deliver me from everything that defiles. Purify me, purify me. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And if you're here in this service and you have not made Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, now is the time because this prayer, you can't make it without accepting him into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. And please say this prayer with me. My Father, I accept you into my life today as my personal Lord and Savior. Be my, be everything to me. Take control of this life. Cleanse me of all my sins in the name of Jesus. Today make me yours, body, soul, and spirit in the name of Jesus. Your word says that if I can confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart, that I will be saved. And today I make a bold confession today that Lord, be my king, be my redeemer. Be everything to me in the name of Jesus. And I believe in my heart that you died to save me. You died to redeem me. And this I accept. And I receive your free gift of righteousness in the name of Jesus. Thank you for making me brand new. Thank you for making me whole. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. You can please be seated. Generation after generation keep praising you, yet no more so to 
Standing. I don't know if you followed through the announcement from last Sunday. Throughout this month, we're going to have 21 days of Thanksgiving. We started on June the 1st. Um, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take the next two, three minutes. Thanking God for what you've prayed for, but you have not seen physically. The Bible says that this is a spirit of faith. We believe and we speak. He said, our God called the things that be not as though they were. So this morning, what are we going to do? I, I'm not asking you to pray. I'm asking him to thank him. So if, let's say you're believing for a payment, and you're believing for this 350 million payment that is due to you, Father, I thank you because the payment has come through already. Let's say you're believing for a child, Father, I thank you because... Have conceived and have had a baby already. Father, I thank you for that. I'm not asking. The reason why is this. The Bible says when we pray, we believe, we receive it. So this is very important. And, and you know this, the thing. I believe that the reason why the Spirit of God wants us to do this is because it will build faith and consistency in our hearts. Lift up a voice. Let's go ahead and thank him, everyone. Let's go ahead and thank him. 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 Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you. Lord, I thank you because prayer point has become testimonies. Father, Lord, I thank you because the word of God for this year has happened. It's a year of unusual, it's a year of exploit and laughter. Father, thank you for NLP conference in the UK. Thank you for giving everyone that attend more than a miracle. Thank you, thank you for salvations of souls. Thank you for the power in the name of Jesus that is demonstrated. Thank you for lifting people in this assembly. Thank you for expansion and growth of the gospel of Jesus Christ all across the world. Thank you for those that were barren, now are pregnant, carrying their baby. Thank you for those that are behind. The speed of God has come upon their lives. Thank you for funds has been released. Thank you for provision has been released. People that were depressed are now joyful. We give you praise and glory. People that were sick are now healed. You've done it again and again. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our King. He's the biggest of the biggest. He's the greatest of the greatest. We rejoice in your power. We rejoice in your power. We rejoice in your faithfulness. There is no God like our God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you and thank you again. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father, the Bible says, when Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus, others were expecting a powerful prayer because Lazarus was dead. And Jesus simply looked up to heaven and said, Father, I thank you because you heard me. He had gotten worse, but that's what he said. Father, we're thankful because you've heard us. And prayer point has become testimonies. 
Father, thank you because you've heard us. Oh, thank you because personal supplication over family members, over, over spiritual growth, over ministry, you've heard us. Thank you because you've heard our supplication over NLP London. Well, thank you because it's massive already. You have heard us. We give you praise. Well, thank you because it's done. For this is a month of total, total and complete testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Keep standing, keep standing. All the other churches are joining. Keep standing. Let me show you a scripture, Zechariah chapter 4. You know, keep standing. Just a few more minutes. Zechariah chapter 4. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 4. In verse 9. And this is what I'm believing God for. This is what I'm, you know, it's in my heart impressed this month. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 9. Can you give me the King James Version? Please just stick with the King James, the, the versions I ask you to. You're doing a great job, all of you at the back. It takes a lot to be working in a dynamic environment like ours. One Sunday you have a gallery and the next Sunday you don't have it again. You know, and the next Sunday you come you have a gallery again. It's almost as if angels build them up at night. Praise the Lord. See what the Bible says. Let's read together. All of you either in Lekki campus, if you're watching, all of you watching online, I want you to stand on your feet anywhere you're watching from. All of you in the kitchen, leave the knives alone. Stand on your feet. All of you watching on the bed, stand on your feet. All of you in, in, in Bagada, in Antony, in the UK, whatever you watch, stand on your feet. In Canada, stand on your feet. And let's read together. I want to go. You know what that means? There will be no more aborted testimonies. That's what that means. What God has started with your children, what God has started with the relationship, with the marriage, with the approval, what God has started in your finances, He says, it's, it, 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 it will finish it. It will finish it. It will finish it. If you believe, shout, I receive it. Amen. Please, you can have your seat. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Um, hallelujah. I wanted to use the scripture and just lay it in your heart from time to time and remind yourself, the hands of Zerubbabel have started it. It will also what finish it. Are you doing a project and it seems so tough? The hands of Zerubbabel have started it. It will also what finish it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. A couple of announcements this morning. I will start with the with a big, big announcement. Um, in our leadership structure, there are huge changes going on because of the expansion we're experiencing as a church. And um, all of you um, um, in Bagada Church, I want Pastor Dyer to really stand on the stage as I speak. In Ikeja Church, I want Pastor Myra to stand on the stage as I speak. And the reason why, and I want um, Pastor Benga Bola to also stand on the stage as I speak. And the reason why is that um, the leaders know this, but would not announce the church generally. Um, officially, Pastor Dyer is going to move to the UK to Pastor Harvesters UK. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, I know that all the people are clapping and Bagada like, oh. But you know what? When I met Bagada, everybody thought Bagada will crumble. But Bagada has grown stronger, better than when I was there. Because it's the work of the Spirit, you know. And um, Bagada is such a special church because that's the mother of everybody. Everybody just came out of Bagada right there. You know, so special, Bagada. I, I, I love Bagada, and uh, it's just special. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bagada has history. Praise the Lord. And um, so says, so he's going to be our pastor. So Pastor Maya Wai is moving from Ikeja Church and moving to Bagada Church as the campus pastor. You know, not just a campus pastor, a group pastor. And Pastor, pastor Benga Gwola, which many of you are not familiar with, is one of the um, associate campus pastors in, in Ikeja is taking over the Ikeja church. After, the, after I finish preaching, um, the campus pastors will tell you more about this, but we just want everyone to know this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. And just to let you, we're having a lot of, um, as we're preparing for NLP UK, we're, go, we're going to announce the date for NLP Canada. Praise the Lord. We're going to announce the date for NLP. It's holding in Toronto, Canada. It's holding in Toronto, Canada. Yeah, yeah. It's holding in Toronto, Canada. And um, we're starting more churches in the UK. We're, we're going to have a North London campus. We're going to have a Birmingham campus. We're going to have something in Manchester. I'm saying it so that if you're anywhere in these things, you can begin to 
send a message in and says, how can I connect? In Birmingham right now, they are watching, you know, and not London, they are watching right now. In Canada, when they get up in the morning, they will also watch the service. Just like in Houston. In Houston, there's a huge gathering. In Indianapolis, I heard that there was a gathering. You know, that's the one I'm even amazed about because I didn't even, you know, but it's just amazing what is going on there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, of course, July the 1st, we will be in the UK for Next Level pr um, Prayer Conference. It's going to be amazing. Um, I don't know, a lot of you, thank you for choosing to come along to the UK. A lot of I made that options. Now, a lot of you are inviting your friends to come to the UK. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. If you've, and the thing is that everyone needs to get a ticket. Everyone needs to, in fact, I got my, I got a notification of my own ticket yesterday. You'll be surprised, yeah. Let me show you what it looks like. I got a notification of my own ticket yesterday. Yeah. It's it. So I hope that all of you are getting, and um, we have a lot of our music team, some of them are coming along with us, you know. Some of our music, I'm trying to look for my ticket. Where is my ticket? Ticket, where are you? Uh, well, I can't seem to find it right now. But I'm sure I'm going to find it before the next service. So, all of you that registered, begin to look in your email box, in your junk emails for the tickets. And um, they'll send you tickets. I, I believe that they'll send you maybe like a wristband or something for you to be able to access the venue. And I'm sending all these videos to prepare your faith for the conference. And the last announcement, um, NLP first Friday. Did you hear the testimony from Next Level Prayers on Friday? If they can find a way to get it back, it was a Zoom a lady, she's, I can't tell her age, but she just had a medical condition and her stomach began to grow. And she, it grew to, and those at the back, I know you're working so hard, but if you can find this for me, I will be very grateful. You know, and it grew to something like a six-month-old pregnancy. She looked six-month-old pregnant. She went to the hospital and there was all this, they couldn't find what was wrong and there was a diagnosis. And one day while she was joining NLP, I was leading the prayers that particular day. I mentioned her case, and I think I mentioned her name, and I mentioned what she was wearing. And I said, you have a protein belly. It's not a fibroid. The power of God is touching you right now. And she said, she was watching from the UK. The power of God touched her. She felt something enter her body. She said, after the prayer, she went to use the restroom, and four huge blood clots came. How many of you remember this testimony? Yeah. Four huge blood clots came out of her system and instantly the stomach began to go down. You know, and right now she's completely healed and she was testifying, showed us her belly, it's back to normal. This is the power of God. I'm saying to you because the tendency is that because you're so familiar with NLP to get used to it, don't get to used to what is anointed. Yeah. Don't get used to it. Yeah. Familiarity destroys the anointing. Don't get used to it. If you've dropped off from NLP, next Sunday, tomorrow, get back on it. If you have a testimony from NLP, make sure you find a way to share it this Sunday or Sunday testimony. Don't get too used to it. If you have a testimony, your friend has a testimony, the testimony is yours. The glory is God's. Give the glory to God. Amen and amen. Glory to God. I don't want a church where, in, you know, where more people outside are sharing NLP testimonies and people inside are not sharing. So we're not going to, we're going to, it's sacred, it's powerful. And it's life changing. Amen. Amen. So tomorrow, NLP continues again. We're praying. Um, if you're joining physical prayers, we're using the church opposite us while we're still working on our facility. And the last announcement is the business acceleration cost. So I think after this service, um, as part of our own sponsorship, everyone from any of the churches I want to join for today, if you register and pay a deposit of the full payment, you'll get a 50% discount. Praise the Lord. Please don't tell anybody I did this because those that paid the full amount will be very upset. You know, yeah, they'll be very upset. But the reason why we're trying to get people in as much as possible. So why is the business cost important? Number one, you'll get the opportunity to have people that will fund your business. You have seed funding opportunity. Number two, you have the opportunity to connect with other entrepreneurs. Number three, you have the opportunity for mentorship. You know, we have the opportunity for mentorship. And number four is that you will learn, you will learn practical things that will make your business scale and grow and do well. So after the service, there's a desk outside the business association cost desk. Go there. Even if you want to pay a deposit, you need to pay a deposit to be part of it. Do it today because the offer is a 24-hour offer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen and amen. All right, let's get into the word of God today. I'm really rushing because 
all the campuses are connected and I don't want to hold us back in any way. Lekki Church, it looks a bit different today, right? Yeah, we had a gallery last Sunday. We'll have a gallery again this Sunday. Uh, well, don't worry. I hope by next Sunday our gallery will be back. Praise the Lord. Yeah, um, we just, we're, we're trying to make sure that it's really nice and just all perfect and we're working on it. Hallelujah. I want to encourage all of you also, you know, when you see things like this going on, it must, you must remember that it costs a lot of money. So you must think of, okay, how can I be able to buy an air conditioner? How can I buy a chair? How can I buy something just to help this go forward? You know, that's something you, know, you, want, you may want to discuss with someone, you may want to do it yourself. Just like NLP conference in the UK, it costs us huge amounts of money because it's in pounds. But thank God for his provision. But we're asking all of you to think of how you can successfully partner with these initiatives. Let's go ahead and get into God's word. Ephesians chapter 1, I'm excited. Praise God. Yeah, I think that this will be the most powerful series I've taught so far. Praise God. Yeah. And amazingly, I discovered that I've never, Pastor Dick and Bill, I've never taught on this. I mean, I could teach something else and come into this, but I've never dedicated a teaching on the believer's authority or the authority of a believer. I've never done that. I, I could teach about the new creation. I could teach about our right in Christ, which connects, but I've never done a full teaching on the believer's authority. You know, um, <laughs> You know, my, my question is, you know, it's a lot of questions on my mind. And uh, this teaching, you know, I, I said, Lord, we will dive in. We will dive in. First of all, before we teach, just lift up your hands and let's just pray one more time. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm asking for this teaching. That you will open the eyes of our understanding and let light flood our minds. You will grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I got born again and I began to read the Bible, I had different experiences than people. So I read the Bible and I saw that, number one, a Christian had authority over the devil. But the other thing I noticed was that, although the Bible said so, a lot of people were afraid of demons. A lot of people were afraid of demons. I mean, I, when I was younger, I did wild things. I remember I schooled in the village. When I say I schooled in the village, I went to a federal school. It was located, you know, they don't locate them in town. It's in the village, Federal Government College. And I remember that in the village, they would... In, we had this opportunity to reach, to go out into the village from our school once in a while. And there was like a shrine, like a tea junction. And people would put offering, put um, things, offering to the idols. I would just go there and kick it out. And when I kicked it, my friend said, hey, 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 hey. And I said, nothing can touch me. You know, my mother was a, was a big time trader. She was a big time trader. I had at some point maybe about 50 to 100 people working for her. But the way trading was in those days, it was a lot of cash. I don't know if you had family that traded. It was a lot. I mean, they used to, it was so much cash that when they closed for the day, they would get about 10, 15 people to count all the money, box it, and all of those kind of things. So one of the times she would ask me to count the money, I'd gotten born again. I'd, I'd noticed this, but when I got born again, I noticed more. So I noticed one small white thing in the money box. How many of you had parents that were traders? Yeah. I know one small white thing in the money box. So, I was curious. I grabbed it. I've seen it all the time, but I never had the courage to touch it. But now that I got born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, I knew why I was in Christ. I picked it. And I asked my mom, what was this? And she, my mom was not willing to have that discussion with me because she already understood how I think. Then my aunt said to me that, oh, it's a special charm. That is not really a charm. You know how they want to deceive you. They say something is not a charm, but it's a charm. So he said, it's not really a charm because a charm is not that you're doing something against somebody. He said, this charm is such that some people spend what they call wicked money. I said, what is wicked money? He said, they give you a naira note that has been infected with demonic powers. And when you put the money 
and join it with other money in the money box. Because those days, when they sell something, they would take the money and take it to the money box. There was no transfer. There was no ATM. You know, this was a while ago. All of you that are Gen Z, sorry about this. I know you don't know what I'm talking about. You know, you don't know what I'm talking about. These are the days of <laughs> ACB. You know ACB Bank? African Continental Bank? Some, you know, these are old banks. So, so my mother will put the money there and, you know, so he said, so he said it's not a charm. It's just to make sure that when that thing is there, if they give them bad money, that thing will like sanctify it. I said, rubbish. So I took it and threw it away. And everyone was upset. Like, I said, no, no, no. I said, I'm here now. My presence sanctifies the money. Then one time we're going to my mom's village. And I'm saying so because you will see Christians. Christians that, Christians that will tell you things like, I'll tell you what they'll say. They'll say, I can't sleep. Something's always pressing me. Christians and these are born again. Some of them are pastors. People that would say they have spiritual husbands. Some of you, you know, they say you have spiritual husband. I met a lady and she told me that they said there's a mark on her forehead that she cannot get married. I said that there's a mark on a Christian's forehead that cannot make her married. And, and I'm sick and tired on how they make the believer, tired, you know, powerless. When you read the Bible, the apostles were not afraid of demons. They were not afraid of demons. The Bible says, even when they were not casting out demons, that a demon-possessed man said, he said, he said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, who are you? They were not there, but they were known in hell. My God. In hell, their name were known. So what happened to us? Then they, you see Christians running from one prayer meeting to another mountain. They are looking for deliverance. Is God that difficult? Where is the authority of the child of God? Something is wrong. They say, he's your village people. You have to go back home. He's a foundational problem. He's in the foundation. You have to go back home? Do you realize that there's no distance in the spirit? As we speak here, whatever is wrong can be corrected. And apart from that, which other foundation do you have that the foundation in Christ? My foundation is in Christ. The one that had the natural foundation died. He says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things, hallelujah. The one that was connected to Umatiora um, 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 died. The one that was connected to uh, Choco Choco Cho died. The one that was connected to Shango died. This is a new world, hallelujah. This is a new world. This is a new man in Christ. Praise God. Someone say, Pastor, don't talk like that too. I, I know the family I came from. I know the kind of battles I'm facing. After this teaching, you will know what to do. Oh my God, you, you heard the story, you heard the story of the lady that, you know, and sometimes when you don't know what to do, that's when you need someone to do it for you. Watch this now. Let me tell you why the chain is important. The challenge with having someone to deal with Satan for you is this. He will come back because the Bible said so. And when he comes back, what will you do? Because you've not learned how to deal with the enemy. So you will keep looking for prayers here and there. You will keep, and, and that's why for men, men sometimes are so confused. They're like, if this thing works, why does it not come back? And sometimes in praying for the sick, I've seen what I prayed for, and six months, two years after the sickness comes back, and they said, maybe I was never healed. I said, you were healed. But what kept you sick is outside. If you allow it to come back again. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. Brother Ken Hagen was sharing a story that he was with a minister. And he, the minister said, I've got the devil on the run. And but I said, glory. He said, no. He said, the problem is that he's running after me. And Brother Hagin said, no. It should be the other way down. You should be the one that is getting the devil to run. So, we're going to learn this today. Okay, let's start from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15. Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 15. If you plan to miss church this month, do not. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 15. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 15. Therefore, I, this is Paul speaking and writing to the Ephesians church. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks to you. Making mention of you in prayer. It's a pr so this is Paul's prayer point. You know, 
you know, I'm, we're having some meetings with the leaders throughout this month. And I'm teaching about the Pauline prayers. See what it says. He says in verse 17, this is Paul's prayer. It's a prayer point. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. This is something you have to pray for yourself often. He says, he says that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. What is revelation? Revelation is knowledge that comes outside the control of your mind. It's, it's, a, it's a dawning. For example, some of these things I'm saying, it would be hard for you to receive it if you don't have revelation. Because you're like, is, is it that easy? Because revelation is, makes it like, that's it. He said that God will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Why? He says, what will happen to you is that, he says, your eyes of understanding, your perception will change. I remember when I began to discover that about healing in the Bible. And someone would say, I'm healed. I, I told the guy, I said, bro, I'm not healed. I, I feel pains. I'm not healed. But the day revelation dawned in my spirit, the pains were still there. And I said to myself, I am healed. The reason why is that there are two kinds of knowledge. There's sense knowledge. What's sense knowledge? Knowledge that comes through the senses. You, you feel it. You taste it. You see it. You see it. That's it. But there's revelation knowledge. It comes through the word of God into your spirit. How do you know? Because it was revealed to your spirit. That was why when Peter said this, when Peter said, he said, when Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. What does Christ say? Just Christ said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. Meaning that what you said did not come from your natural sense. It was a revelation from heaven. And if you want to be sincere here, there are times you know things that your mind does not know. That's revelation knowledge. It will just come to you. So, it says that the eyes of understanding may be enlightened. Why? That we may know the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the saints. And what is, now let's, oh, sha, da, da, da. Hey, verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power at work, at work towards us who believe according to his mighty power. I want to read to you the, you know, I want to read to you the message, the message translation. Well, maybe, maybe the, 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 the passion translation. The message did not capture it the way I wanted. But let me read to you the passion translation. Oh, wow. Someone say hallelujah. Okay. Yeah. So see, this is what it says here in verse 19. Oh, yeah. He says in the, in the passion translation, I pray you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power that it's made available to you through faith. I, I love it. The King James said the exceeding greatness of his power. The question is that where is this power? It's made available to me. So Paul's prayer was that now that you're born again, I want you to know what you have. That's God's prayer, Paul's prayer. Paul's prayer was simple that, hey, now that you are born again, I want you to know what you have. For example, if you marry a man, you may not know what he has, yes or no. He says, now that you're born again. So he says that the prayer is that God will open the eyes of understanding that you may know the hope of his calling, the inheritance in the saints. The challenge is this. You are born again, but you do not know what you have. So you still keep living as if you have nothing. Glory to God. Glory to God. What do we have? Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 20. Oh, wow. Somebody say hallelujah. That you may know what you have. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 20. Wow. <laughs> You've read this verse, but my emphasis is on somewhere else in this verse. Hmm. Are you ready? Let's read verse 20. Want to go? Now unto him. Uh-huh. Hold on. Can we read together? On the, on the campus, can we read together? All of you online. The rest is one to go. Now unto him. Hold on. 
Hold on. Where is the power? In heaven or in us? Hey. He said, he said, all this power, he says, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think according to the power that at work within us. The power is not in heaven. The power is within us. Have a mobile powerhouse. Oh, I thought someone would say that. I, I saw someone type, I'm, I'm a mobile powerhouse. That's it. Someone says, I don't feel like it, but you need to know. But that's why you're here. To know that, hey, you are a mobile powerhouse. You know, why is this important? <laughs> why is this important? This is very important. Why is it important to know this? There was a, there was a great story from Ken Hagen. And Ken Hagen had a vision where Jesus, Ken Hagen really influenced me a lot in my teachings. Ken Hagen had a vision, and in this vision, Jesus was talking to him in the vision. Then a demon appeared. It was like, like an ape, like a monkey size. And when the demon appeared, Jesus was talking. I mean, the demon began to say something like this. And as he was talking, the volume was going louder and louder. And he couldn't hear what Jesus was saying again. Because Jesus was saying that he was making noise. And Kenny was like, doesn't Jesus know that I can't hear this demon? So eventually we're like... Ugh eventually, he was struggling, was like, mm -mm, but he couldn't hear. It just, all of a sudden, he got so angry in the spirit. He said, stop in Jesus' name and cast the demon out. And the demon just went and kept quiet. And he turned back to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is something that touched him. He said, if you didn't, if you didn't stop him, I couldn't. Then he said, Jesus Christ, how can you say you couldn't stop a demon? He said, how do you say that? He said, if you didn't stop him, I can't stop him. He said, that's not true. Show me the Bible. He said, because in the Bible, I already gave you authority and assignment to resist the devil. Remember Romans. He says, resist the devil. Did he say God will resist him? He says, resist the devil. And he shall what? You know, when I was younger, there's this popular prayer in my vernacular. Lord, resist the devil. Lord, rebuke the devil. It's a useless prayer. The reason why is that he told you, Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Let's look at it. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. So the reason, so one of the reasons a lot of Christians suffer is that they are expecting God to resist the devil for them. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Are you there? Are you there? Oh, wow. Read together. Let's read together. I want to go. Behold. He says, I give you the word power there. Of course, the Greek is more extensive. The more power there, because they love word used for power. But the word power there means authority. He says, I give you authority. So guess what? If God has given you authority... He says, I've given you authority to do what? To tread upon serpent and scorpions. Then what are serpents and scorpions? Before you think it's physical for serpent and scorpions. And he says, and over all. So the serpent and scorpions were metaphor. And over all the power of the enemy. My God. I have the authority to tread over all the power of the enemy. So then. How can I be cursed if I have the power to tread over all the power of the enemy? So then, how can a demon hijack my pregnancy if I have the power to tread over all the power of the enemy? You know, some of you, when we pray next level, you, you need to, when you follow next level prayer, notice what we pray and how we pray. Number one, someone says, why don't you say demon die? I say, it's a simple thing because demons don't die. Demons are spirit beings. Spirits don't die. If demons die, natural sense, won't you have killed all of them by now? Since we've been killing them. No, demons are like human beings. They are spirits. They stay alive. At the end of the day, they will go to hell. Hell is a spiritual compartment to contain spirits. What do, and listen, 
So says, so why do we bind demons? Jesus Christ told us. He says, when you send the devil out, it will come back. So that's why we are offensive, canceling the work of evil spirits. And let me tell you something. If you're not aware of the work of evil spirits, you're already under the influence of evil spirits. If you say evil spirits don't exist, that mentality shows that you're already under their influence. Because the nature of the devil is a serpent. Serpent loves to hide, to strike. So, the greatest demonic work are never seen until they strike. They will be there. You will not know they are there. Oh, glory to God. So the question is, that, why, why, so why does a Christian, you know, uh, Pastor, you can remember that lady, you know, um, she's married now, that she used to get drunk and they will have sex with her in her sleep. You know, th- this is 20 years ago. I was really young. I must have been in my early 20s. You know, uh, she was, she, as I was preaching one day, the Lord opened my eyes and I said, there's a lady here, um, beans, have sex with you, like you feel that way. And, um, and she came out, and she had also become a drunk at 21, thereabouts. She was either 20 or 21. She had become a drunk. She, she didn't date again. And I said, what happened? He said, since when I was young, these things will come and sleep with me. He said, when I wake up, he said, when I'm active, I try to push them away. He said, but I never succeed. You know, I call the name of Jesus Christ, I never succeed. And I'm going to explain to you why people call the name of Jesus Christ, and it never works. He said, I never succeed. He said, so instead of fighting it, I get drunk. He said, when I get drunk, then, you know, they do whatever they want to do in the morning. I clean up and I go my way. He said, that's how I've lived my life. And I looked at her and I said, I have authority over those evil spirits. And she was even born again, by the way. And I said, and I rebuke the evil spirits. Today she's married to about two or three kids. Just because, but the question is this. I, the reason why I'm teaching you this is that I don't want to reduce the authority of a believer to a pastor. It's what belongs to every Christian. As a man, you should know this, that when the devil comes on your child, you can say, honey, step aside. I know what this is. Your child needs to come out. There was a time they were doing prayers for someone that had it. She had a growth on the body. As, you know, just imagine the growth was here. As I touch, I say, come on. The growth, right in front of that, the growth moved. I said, this is not a growth. This is a demonic work. How can growth be moving like that in your body? Same thing. I've seen people that could not deliver. 12 months. Doctors couldn't help them deliver. And as soon as I prayed for them, the anointing came on them in hours. They were released. But the question is that, is that authority for Pastor Bolaji? Is that authority for Pastor Tony? Is that authority for Pastor Nee? Oh no, especially for Pastor Deja. Of course you this No! The authority. See, Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I give you authority. It didn't say pastors. It's for everyone. Some of you, what is going on in your business is more than the eye. It's a work of spiritual influence that needs to be destroyed. And that's why this teaching, you should Take it very seriously. So the first thing I wanted to show you is this. That the Bible says that there's power at work in us. There's power, raw power at work in us. The believer has two things. The believer has power and authority. They're not the same. So in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, when it says, I give you power, that's authority. Let me show what authority is. Um, where's the guy with traffic stuff? Come. The traffic guy. You come. Mark, yeah, come. Truma, come. Yeah. Chuma, you come. Don't worry, you come. Leave him alone. Stand over here. Once you see this, and this guy says stop, what do you stop for? Do you stop because of him or you stop because of the badge? The badge. What is the badge? Authority. The problem with you is that you think authority is about you. No, it's not about you. It's about God has put a badge on you. That, that's what authority is. You may, let me even give an example. Where's our other guy? Come over here. This guy's a young guy. I can probably beat him. Stand here, sir. Stand here. Face us. Attention, sir. Yeah. Look at this guy. No, no chest, nothing. But if this guy says, 
Wait. Some of you are even richer than him. Why do you wait? Is it because of his size or because of his uniform? Listen, when you come into Christ, you get a uniform. When you come into Christ, you can... The demons may have been on earth for a long time, but you now have a uniform. Listen to me. If you touch him, you touch the government. The back of this office is the government. You don't understand. I may look young. I may look tiny. I may be a lady with a tiny voice. Hallelujah. 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 And I'm like, you know, but listen to me. That's how my voice is for in the spirit. I got authority. In the spirit, I got the whole of heaven's power is behind me. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. It's good to know I have authority. Hey, don't play with me. I have authority. I, I remember one time, we were going to my mom's village. Oh, stand here. I love you, sir. We are going to my mom's village. So my mom warned us, when you get there, I don't know what she thinks about Ijebu. But she said, Ijebu is known to be fetish. I said, don't drink, don't eat. Not me. <laughs> As I was going, I had prepared. All I had to do was to read the word of God and pray in tongues. You must remember that this time I was 13, 14, 15. Oh. It was not as if I was one adult. So when I got there, I said, I need a drink. My mother looked at me. I looked at her. I said, it is well. When, when I got the drink, I said, thank you because we shall do deadly things. It shall not hurt us. I say every influence has been paralyzed. I drank it. Till we got home, my mom was just looking at me. Was just looking. But the, see, the difference between you and I is that you will not go and do the same thing. Not knowing the authority you have, that you will not feel a stomach problem. Don't do what others do, except you understand why they do it. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? So, I said the believer has two things. Authority and power. So, authority is, authority is delegated power. So, for example, the power he has, the authority he has, was given to him. It's not something, there's nothing about him physically. Chuma, come, Chuma, come. You know, if this guy stops you, will you stop? Tell me, Chuma, yes or no? You will stop. But between the two of them, see, 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 who, see, who, who can handle who? See, it's not in the look, it's in the authority. This is a problem you make. You keep looking at yourself and say, who am I? What do I have? You're looking at the wrong thing. Look at your what? Authority. What is your authority? Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I've given you power over shepherds and scorpions. Oh man, Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. This is a time to stand on your feet and shout hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. If the devil wants to mess with your family, you finish him. Please have your seat. See what it says. He said, Behold, I give unto you power. Over what? Over what? Serpent and scorpions. This is Luke chapter 10 verse 19. And what? Take note. He says, Over all, without exception. He says, Over all, the power of the enemy. Listen, you are in a, you are a mobile powerhouse. One time I was flying. Oh, wow. I, I didn't want us to get here because I, I'm just starting. Over all the power of the enemy. And, you know, because for me, I was favored by God to learn this when I was young. When I was in secondary school, there was this thing they say would well, shake the buckets, shake the bed in boarding house. Do you know the stories of boarding house? Good. I was one of the leaders in fellowship. So, in the night, you just see them screaming, ah, hey, hey, I can't talk, hey, hey, I was trying to say, chi, 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 Jesus could not come out. So, I said to them, it was a particular room that was known for that. I said, I'm coming tomorrow night. Tell them I'm coming. Tell them I'm coming. When I came, 
Normally, the bunks are on the right and on the left, and the center of the room is what's empty. I took my mattress and put it in the center. I said, so that when anything comes, it will meet me first. I was there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Nothing came. I said, can you see you guys? It's just a figment of imagination. They said, maybe. The next day I left, the thing came. <laughs> because Satan knows who knows his authority. He knows. That's why, that's why he says all these things. You see, you have a mark on your forehead. I, I remember Bishop was saying a story. They said that his wife was, um, his wife had, had an abortion or was bleeding. And, and his, he looked at the wife. He said that, the Bible says nothing will cast their young. He said, you are carrying pregnancy, no blood. Go and sleep. And the pregnancy stayed and turned into a full baby. The question today, and this is where we're starting from, we're just starting, is that have you taken time to think about your authority in Christ? Do you know upon the fact that this guy is an, has authority, there are things he can do and there are things he cannot do. If he does not know his authority, you can ride him, even though he has a uniform. The reason why a lot of Christians have been ridden by Satan is because they do not know the authority. Thank you, two of you. Can I have the... So, two things we have. Number one, we have authority. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. But we also have something else. Authority is the word exousia. The next thing we have is power. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power. It's called dunamis. What is power? The, so, authority is that I'm licensed. I have a right to do it. Power is that I can do it. Come, sir. Come, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, do I have authority or have power? <laughs> what is it? It's a plastic gun, just for in case people are watching online. It's a plastic gun, don't worry. Do, do I have authority? <laughs> do, do I have authority or have power? <laughs> if someone comes to you and says, hey, give me your money, do you say, where's your authority? <laughs> is that what you say? No. Instantly, you, you will start saying that, hey, one young boy would just come with a gun. We just knew that. Say, hey, my, my master. This boy is just 17 years old. You are 44. You say, my master, I'm sorry. What, what do you want? You, you just, you that you can finish your husband. You become so submissive. The reason why is that you have seen what? Power. Power is not, see, power is power, sir. <laughs> so I said, knowledge is power. Power is power. When you see power, you know you have made power. When someone does this to you, you say, hmm, hmm. Hands up, you say, yes, sir. Y yes, sir. Do you have it? I have it. <laughs> open your car, I will open. Because the person has power. You know, the beautiful about God is this. Hold on to this for me. He didn't only give us authority. He gave us power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Mad talk up. Someone say, Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. See what it says. Are you there? He says, and you shall receive power. He says, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He, okay, Some of you are saying, give me more power. Uh-uh, sir. Powerhouse is inside here. I'm a mobile powerhouse. If I step someone, power has stepped inside. If I enter somewhere, power is there. If your father's not moving pieces, we will use power to move it. Yeah. I said, we will we'll use power to move it. They say you can't get mine. We will use power to change it. They say you can't get the approval. We will use power to change it. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, Amen. Yeah. There is power in the name of Jesus. The doctor said, hey, madam, he seems like cancer. You said, doctor, I can take care of that. How can I take care of that? There's power in the name of Jesus. They said, the fallopian tube is blocked. He said, I can take care of that. There's power in the name of Jesus. We are not empty. Oh, Rabbi. Let me read one scripture so that you're close. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ah. We are not empty people, oh. No, mobile powerhouse. You will update your status. I'm a mobile powerhouse. 
Hey, I'm a mobile powerhouse. <laughs> Genesis, 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 Genesis. Chapter 82, verse 6. Genesis, chapter 82, verse 6. Oh, this is why. This is why you have to catch this. Genesis, chapter 82, verse 6. This is the challenge of many Christians. Thank you, sir. Genesis, chapter 82, verse 6. Let me read to you. He said, I have said it. You are God's. All of you, children of the Most High. He said, but the problem is this. I said, I'm sorry, Psalms. I was wondering why the scripture was not up. Oh, wow. I'm a mobile powerhouse. Are you here? Let's read together. I want to go. I have said, ye are gods. All of you, children of the Most High. Look at the next verse. But you would die. That's the problem. He said, you are more than this, but you choose to live like men. Any small thing, any small thing. Oh God, this is how I will not be married. This is my 38th birthday. I don't have a man in my life. And God is saying, why are you talking to me? Talk to the mountain. Talk to the mountain. You've been talking to God about your mountain. He said, whosoever shall say to this mountain. He said, God, won't you give me the money? God is saying, talk to the finance. Talk to the finance. You, you will talk to the finance. Listen to me. Bible says, whatever Adam called the animal, so it was. You will call your business prosper. It will prosper. I said, you will call your business prosper. First of all, how is authority expressed? Authority expressed through words. Yes or no? When they say stop, it's not about physique, it's about authority. Stop. You exercise your authority to work. You command the marriage to come. You command the job to come. You command the clients to come. You command the pay to come. You will say things like this. The biggest deal in my field comes to me. Hallelujah. I said the biggest deal in my field comes to me. Someone said the biggest deal in my field comes to me. That's how, why do we confess? You know, in NLP, if you notice, we confess a lot. Because we are expressing authority. The Bible says, anywhere the word of the king is, there is power. Ah, the biggest thing in my industry come to me. My body is full of life and health. Say it, say it, say it, say it. My body is full of life and health. Praise God. Stand on your feet, let's confess the word of God. Oh, glory to God. Stand on your feet. Let's confess the word of God. Hallelujah. Go ahead and confess. I want to read the scripture to you. Go ahead and confess the word of God. Oh, now, all of you online, stand on your feet. In the churches, stand on your feet. Let's confess God's word. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I want to hear you go ahead and confess the word of God. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm in success all the time. I'm in success. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 7. This is why we confess. Ezekiel 37, verse 7. See what it says. Oh, glory to God. See what it says. He says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. As I prophesied, there was a noise. The word I spoke produced noise. He said, and there was a shaky. <laughs> when do you need a shaky? <laughs> Prophesy the shaky. He said there was a shaky. And what happens? And the bones began to come together. I don't know what you need to see, but prophesy it. Hallelujah. That child that is out is not stable. Prophesy. That baby you need, prophesy it. I said, go ahead and declare it. Go ahead. That bad dream, cancel that bad dream. I said, cancel it. He said, as I prophesied, there was a noise. There was a shaking. Hey, prophesy it. Prophesy it. Speak about that project. Speak about the appointment. Speak about the contract. Speak about the finances. Speak about your health. Declare it. Oh, glory to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
If I were you, I would go back and watch this message online. I would send it to my friends. He said, so as I prophesied, as I was, there was a noise. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say, Amen. amen. As you have prophesied today, the shaking has begun in your favor. I said, as you have prophesied today, the shaking has begun in your favor. I said, the shaking has begun in your favor. Lama, lift up your hands towards heaven. That which you desire, let the wind of the spirit bring it to you. What you are chasing has begun to chase you. I said, what you are chasing has begun to chase you. Receive the promotion. Receive the appointment. Receive the miracle. Receive the healing. Receive the breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, the bad dream is cancelled. The oppression is cancelled. The oppression is cancelled. The curse is over. In the name of Jesus. Someone say, I ate in my dream, and so what? When you wake up, cancel it. Ah, <laughs> you cancel it. They say your child is showing signs of uh, your child is looking at signs of autism. You look at the child and point in the hand. You say, Not here. You say, Not here. Not here. Not here. Out in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, oh God. Oh, Father, we thank you for your word. We know who we are. Say, I know who I am. I'm a child of God. I've got authority. I've got power. I'm a mobile powerhouse. When I speak, power follows. When I speak, demons tremble. When I speak, earth obeys. Because I'm a child of power. Praise God. They say petrol price has increased. You say the money to buy surplus is available. We are not talking scarcity, we are calling surplus. When others are looking to manage, we have surplus. Your marriage is troubled. I bring peace to my marriage. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Please, you can have your seat. Whoa. Oh wow. Did, did, did you, oh wow, let me just stop. <laughs> did you feel faith rising in your spirit? Do me a video, send me a comment. Let me know how this message blessed you. You know, share on your status. You're a mobile powerhouse. I've got authority. Let's go ahead and give our Titan offerings. As you give your Titan offerings today, give from a place of faith. Don't give from a place of fear. Give from a place of faith. Don't give from a place of faith. Give from a place of faith. If you're Titan, a lot of us should be tight and it's time to go ahead and tight right now. Um, if you're tight, will you stand on your feet? If you did it during the week or you're doing it after you leave here, just stand on your feet and join them. If you're here, stand and let's pray together. All of you that want to give into our project, stand and join them. Or maybe you're giving to NLP London, stand and join them. Also want to just receive right now. Hallelujah. Can we go ahead and pray? Oh, wow. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we once again thank you for the provision you've blessed us with. And today we bring our tithe and our offerings to honor you. We ask that your blessing will be upon everyone given. The Bible says that he that watereth shall also be watered. I'm praying as they give, O oh God, let them also be watered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of you that tighten, I pray that the hand of God will be significant in what you do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is good will not grow bad. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please, you can have your seat. And while we're doing that, if today happens... To be your first time. So if you want to type the account, details are there on the screen. All of you watching online, it's time to give the account. Details are still on the screen. You can use the PayPal, the Zelle, the accounts in different countries. You can use it to give. Hallelujah. Okay. If today is your first time in Harvesters, we're excited that you were here. Welcome to Harvesters International Christian Center. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Your first time. Will you just raise up your right hand so Lord, to welcome you in Jesus' name? What's well, my first time? Wow, so many people are here for the first time. The lady with the glasses, thank you for being here for the first time. The lady over there, thank you. Please just wave your hands above your head. Just wave your hands above your head. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and welcome them, please. Let's put our hands together and welcome them. Your first time, my brother? Is it your first time? Half first time, thank you so much. Another person that is here for the first time, I've not gotten a card from the ushers. I've not gotten a card. 
Raise up your hands. There's a lady over there. Thank you so much, lady in black, and waving your hands. Wow, you look amazing. Thank you for coming for the first time, ma'am. Thank you very much. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's a, there's, a, there's a guy over there in white. Thank you for coming. The ushers will give you the card. Someone says, well, all churches take information. But we do it for a special purpose. We wanted to write a prayer request on that card that we can use to pray for you. And something about our church you need to know is that God answers our prayers. Oh, yes, because we know how to cast out devils. Praise God. Some people are called to fight devils. We are called to cast them out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you, but don't miss this series. I think it's life-changing for everyone. Amen. Praise God. Fill the cards and return back to the ushers. After this service, we have our growth track. What is a growth track? If you're new to our church and you want to meet people, you want a pastor to pray for you, you want to get baptized in water, you want to know about dedications, there's a class called growth track. It holds in the building opposite to the second floor. And the first floor is a two-story building opposite. The growth track is there. It's a 40 minutes class. The pastors will get to know you, pray for you, tell you more about the church, tell you how you can join the workforce. You can attend the growth track today. All right. Can we stand on our feet as we close the service? If you've gotten the cards and you don't have a pen to fill, the ushers will give you a pen. Just let them know you don't have a pen to fill. And if you've gotten the cards, you can return to the ushers at this time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Service was really... Did you... I just feel full of the Spirit. Amen. Last announcement. Some of the car packs we're using are paid. So I just wanted you to know they're not our car packs. And I know that some of you already pay without knowing, but I just wanted to mention that some of the car packs are requiring us to pay. And if you're able to do that, it would just be great also because, you know, because we are running out of car park space. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And surely, 